What's happening everybody, the poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. And today's video, we're gonna be applying this water block to the motherboard in the 7950X here. So the, the whole thing that's been going on here with this series is AMD moved from an AM4 platform where the pins were actually on the processor, the CPU. Now with AM5, the pins are actually no longer on the CPU. They're on the motherboard, so an LGA format, all right? So you have a whole lot of pins, like 1,718 pins. I counted every single one of them. And um, so they're directly on the motherboard. So when you plop in this processor, you just have to be careful not to drop it on the motherboard and bend any of those pins, right? So uh, I did show a video of me doing that, properly applying it to the motherboard. So check that video out. I didn't drop anything. And now it comes to... The water block so previous video we did water um basically leak test with uh, distilled water this thermal take it's the pacific w7 plus and um yeah it uh it, it was interesting we did have a leak not from this but from the pump it was it was unexpected but now you always want to make sure that your blocks so whether whether you're using uh, an air cooler an aio or custom water cooling the back side here needs to be completely clean. And then of course, your 7950X or whatever processor you're using also needs to be clean as well before you apply your thermal paste. And there's a large selection of thermal compounds that are out there. So I'm gonna go through some of that. So hopefully this will be educational because this is actually physically different as well. So I'm gonna recommend a particular way to install thermal paste uh, or apply thermal paste or spread thermal paste, hint, hint, to this new unique shaped, uh, uniquely shaped processor. We'll just put it that way. So uh, let's uh, open this back up. Uh, whenever I'm like having a, a motherboard sitting around on a table, I tend to just pick it up and put it back in the box so I don't drop stuff on it. I'm not Linus, you know, I take precautions. All right, let me get into this. Linus Tech Tips, go follow him for those that have no idea what I just said. <laughs> If you have seen some of my previous videos, you know I like to use Arctic Clean 1 and 2, these thermal uh, material removers. And uh, this is a surface purifier right here. So this one has no thermal compound on it. This one is kind of like a surface purifier, so it really does clean it. So I do like to use this first, right? So just a simple, just one or two drops. And then at this point, I'll just simply, just grab your normal Q-tip, Right, and so this is just kind of a, a nice rub down, nice cleaning process. So you'll see that this is oddly shaped, right? This is not your typical square-ish or rectangle type of CPU. And uh, there are certain devices that companies like uh, Thermal Grizzly sells that you can apply on top of the edges here to cover these, you know, uh, electronic points. I'll just put it that way. So, but this is a nice way to just make sure that you're getting the best cleaning possible. And then we're going to do the same thing with this here. This is the Thermaltake W7 Plus. So since this Thermaltake water block did previously have thermal paste on it, we're going to use this, the thermal uh, material remover first. And just go ahead and douse it on there. Now you're supposed to let this sit for a good 30 seconds. So I'm just gonna spread this around so it kind of gets to everywhere it needs to be. So I want this entirely clean uh, for the most part. All right, so it's around, it's gonna look wet. And then I'll fast forward to uh, when I'm going to do the next step. So you can see here that in the grooves of the screws, some of the previous thermal compound is actually still coming up. But luckily for us, these grooves here are not actually going to be touching the, uh, the IHS on the CPU. So that's pretty good right there. And now let's use number two. First, let's uh, clean all this off. You can just use a nice little paper towel for that to remove the excess. There we go. See, a little bit does still come off. So because of that, I'm going to use a little bit more. This particular CPU water block, uh, I didn't treat so well. So there are some scratches on there. And that may actually affect its 
uh, ability to correctly transfer heat. And because AM5 is brand new, this is the only CPU water block that I have right now that actually has an, uh, this thing right here, an upgrade kit, right? Because this is meant for AM4, AM5 is different. So you actually need an upgrade kit if your manufacturer actually makes one for the AIO or air cooler or custom water block that you actually have. So see my previous video on that. I've been knocking out of the park on all this stuff. All right, so let's clean all this off one more time. That's pretty good. All right, so let's use number two. Spread this around. So I can tell that there's still some coming up over here, but I really don't care. Because it's not that big of a deal. Now, when it comes to thermal compound, you have a lot of options. So this one here is uh, the, by GLID, it's their Extreme. They do rate this on the back uh, in terms of what it compares to, like their competitors. And they're saying it does a little bit better than Arctic Cooling MX2. Um, you know, you always want to take uh, all of the thermal conductivity ratings with a grain of salt because each company has their own way of doing it. So you might pick up, say, Kingpin KPX, and even though they don't really say like what their thermal conductivity rating is, um, this has been pretty good. I've been very happy with it. It's very expensive for thermal compound, and you'll see a lot of people use this for more high-end, um, more exotic overclocking needs. Then you have liquid metal. Um, I do use this a lot. I've done a number of videos on applying liquid metal. It has its uses, it has its downsides. So if you don't understand thoroughly how to use liquid metal, don't even bother. All right. Uh, this is more very advanced stuff because you can easily break and destroy everything that you're trying to take care of. Okay. So if you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, stay away from this. If you're advanced, you already know. All right. And then uh, we have a uh, Arctic MX4. I've been a big fan of this because it's been consistent. There is something called thermal pumping where when the uh, CPU uh, gets very hot, then all of the thermal paste uh, is going to react a certain way. But then say you shut down your PC, it gets colder and then you turn on your PC, it gets hotter and your gaming it gets hotter and then you shut down your PC, it's colder. So all that thermal pumping actually will push a lot of thermal paste to the edges over time. I found that MX4 is pretty good with handling that. And uh, so it's just been consistent. I really like that. So this has been kind of my main go-to over the, over the years, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, and I have a lot of it too. Um, then you also have like a, I believe this is a Thermal Grizzly uh, Cryo Knot. Uh, a lot of water block companies, they will include like EKWB, they will include Thermal paste, it's, there's no label in it, but I think it is Thermal Grizzly for this one. Uh, pretty darn good as well. Um, so it's hard to go wrong with name brand stuff, but in my experience, I, I have been enjoying the, the MX4. Plus when I'm doing uh, a lot of different builds, I really wanna understand the, uh, the thermal conductivity, like how well is the heat transferring from my CPU to whatever water block I'm using. And if I'm constantly using the same thermal paste, that kind of eliminates a little bit of that miscellaneous, that unknown, right? Uh, instead of just going from one thermal paste to another to another. Uh, so that's kind of my best practice. And uh, these are affordable as well as I have a ton of them. So then many thermal compounds will include a spatula for a reason. I know a lot of people like to just do little P format or an X or a line or happy face or whatever, that leads to chance. Meaning uh, you're not guaranteeing that you're gonna get your thermal compound across the entire IHS of the CPU, right? So if you put it on an angle, maybe you're pushing the thermal paste to the left or to the right and it's not getting everywhere uh, or maybe you didn't apply enough, right? And so you're pressing it straight down but then you still have the edges of the CPU um, that are just not covered. If you use a spatula, as I'm going to show you, especially on this AM5, then you have now zero risk of the entire H A IHS actually having coverage for your thermal compound because you need that paste there uh, because you just can't have metal on metal contact. 
they're not 100% flat, right? They're actually groovy, groovy, baby. Uh, so you need that pace to get into all of those grooves to then connect the bottom metal to the top metal. So it's like gelling, right? So let's do that right now with, with some MX-4 by Arctic. And this is not sponsored. I'm just, this is what I do. <laughs> so here we have the Arctic MX-4. And I am going to suggest that you also have a Q-tip readily available as well. Because you may want to get into these grooves just to make sure you're not over spreading. And then it's just going to plop down into some of those components there. So we're just going to start with about that much. All right. Just be careful with that. Go ahead and put the top back on. Grab your spatula, right? Let's make sure it's nice and clean. Spit shine it. You know, you know what I mean. And uh, just kind of do this. And if you don't apply enough, you can always add more. If you apply too much, you can always take some away. All right? So for me here, You'll see that I may want to apply a little bit more. But the whole point of me doing this is you'll notice I want to get it over here and over there. And I'm going to apply a little bit more with the left hand, slightly ambidextrous. There we go. And get this over here, almost like painting. Happy trees, happy IHSs. And you can take your time with it. And AM4 IHSs, and that's what this big block is that's shaped like a random, I don't even know what shape this is. They're very thick this round. And because they're so thick, that is one reason why the temperatures are higher. And therefore, we want to make sure that the entire IHS has the ability to transfer heat to our water block, right? Or air cooler, or whatever your thermal solution is. And it doesn't have to be a goopy amount, just enough, oops, sorry camera, just enough to make this happen. There we go. Happy trees. Yeah, think of it as painting. So right down there, good. Down there, we're good. Down there, we're good. All right. Fantastic. Don't worry about air bubbles or anything like that forming because the amount of pressure we put on here, there's not going to be any air at all. all right. Some people are like, oh, no, you're pasting it. Now there's going to be air. You're putting a lot of metal on metal pressure to squeeze the living guts out of all this stuff. Okay, so this is all clean for the most part. We're then going to be sliding this down. And how do I want to do this? I think I'm going to have this come over this way. I'm thinking of cable management ahead of time because I may want this to come over here like that. Yep, something like that. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do it this way. I always want to think ahead when it comes to cable management. And before I tie it down, I just want to make sure that this will actually do what I want it to do. Maybe. Maybe, baby. Will you fit? It will. Okay, so that's how I'm going to have it. Therefore, I'm ready to tie that down. And so this water block actually does have these little cute little things right here. There we go. Once again, happy little round plastic pieces. So you always want to follow the instructions for your CPU water block. So that one right there, just want to make sure, good. And this, I'm going to press it down. Same with the next one. Press it down a little bit over here. Good. And this one, same thing. 
and we are going to do the crisscross pattern. Now some CPU water blocks will specifically say, hey, only hand tighten. Some will say, just go ahead and tighten. And so for this one, I can tell because of the springs that I can just go ahead and keep tightening up until the point where I have resistance. And then I'll grab the screwdriver just to do a little bit more. Okay. So as you can tell, this is pretty straightforward and easy. Yep. And because this has its own spring mechanism, it basically stops automatically. There we go. I like this a lot. Boom. Done. And so that's it. So just make sure you clean off your, your spatula thing or whatever you use. Make sure it's a soft plasticky thing. I've seen some people use like credit cards even, which are perfectly fine. Just make sure it gives, right? Because you don't want to scratch the metal. And uh, so just save it, like put it back in the box if it came with one. And uh, again, you have selections, you know, uh, conduct a knot, liquid metal, do your research, ask a lot of questions, and then probably still not use it. Uh, this is uh, the Kingpin KPX, very good, definitely enjoy it. Uh, the G-Lid Extreme, perfectly fine, kind of on the lower end in my opinion though. And then of course, uh, MX4, it's just been my consistent go-to. Uh, Thermal Grizzly, uh, Cryonaut, very good. And um, yeah, so there are options. So just Google, ask questions, ask questions in the comment section. And you can see that this looks pretty darn good on this MSI Meg X670E Ace motherboard. Very high-end motherboard by MSI. Really love it with tons and tons of features. So go ahead and see my video review of this motherboard and, uh, and unboxing and all that stuff. And I'm excited to uh, spark up the 7950X. 16 cores, 32 threads on this thing. So thank you for watching this educational series. More to come. As you can tell, this is a water block. We have, we have water cooling to do and a very cool case. This case right now on Amazon is like 1300 and something dollars by thermal take. It, the price has gone up. So yeah, that's how nice of a case it is. So stay tuned for that video and uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.